All right. We have got Deputy Governor Francis Mongangi of uh, Machakos County. Good to see you. Welcome to the program. Thank you. 903 candidates starting their examination. How about your preparation in Machakos County? First of all, just to wish them all the best as they start their papers. Allow me to wish them uh, best of luck. This is uh, their second very important uh, undertaking in their lives. Uh, I wish them well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm happy with the, the arrangements from the Ministry of Education. You can see that the, 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 they have put all the measures to ensure a successful event. Mm. That is the uh, KCSE. Yeah. And uh, we wish them well. Mm. They are prepared for four years. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, it is their time now. Mm. Um, the, the only thing and a bit is uh, as a country we have been entertaining a system that... Um, uh, allows a lot of wastage yes what do i mean a lot of wastage mm -hmm. uh the, the, we know we have a saying in my community that uh, the, 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 this swinging thing mm. not all the monkeys can fit in that uh, swinging uh, swinging thing mm. and, and, and uh, what that means i'm um, saying is we have stars for different industries for different fields mm. um, the, the, not all the students who are going to sit for that exams are going to be A, B plus materials. Mm. What happens to those ones who do not uh, uh, have, uh, who will not pass the exams, yeah. who are likely also to be majority? That is a system I'm, to, I'm referring to. But now with the new system, mm -hmm. I think everyone will fit in his or her area of uh, expertise, yeah. the area of interest, which I think is the good thing. Mm. Yes. All right. Very well. And of course, we also wish all the best to the candidates starting the examinations this time round. We're all there, so it is your time. Make sure you get the best out of it. All right. Quick into the front page of our local daily. List. Let me start with the front page of the Daily Nation. Best 150 MPs. Best 150 MPs. Um, a majority of Kenyans think that MPs have uh, performed well since they were elected into office last August with Kiharu MP Ndindi Nyoro topping the charts according to a new InfoTrack poll. But uh, what have these legislators done to rank highly? What have they done to rank highly? Uh, just a quick one, that Kiharu MP Ndini Nyoro is uh, tops with 70%, uh, followed by Kangema Member of Parliament, that is Peter Irungu, with 68%. Again, the South MP, John Migwi, with 66%, and the number continues on and on and on. What did they do to rank that? Page 2, 3, and 4 of the Daily Nation. Nidinyoro leads the pack as MPs are rated in the new survey. According to the poll, Kiharu's Nidinyoro is the best performing MP in the country with a performance rating of 70%. And um, a majority of Kenyans think that MPs have, perf have performed well since they, were being, since they were elected into office last August, that is last year. And um, what do you make of this, uh, DG? You've been a member of parliament before. And a couple of questions when people asked how they rate their members of parliament is either delivery of their promises or their real interaction and their presence in their respective constituencies. <sighs> One, as a researcher myself, I'm yes. not doubting that ranking. Mm. But, uh, but uh, um, you know, these members are too many in parliament. So I would also wish to, 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 to congratulate those who happened to be, to be in the top 150. But I hope it is not because of uh, how they appear mm. uh, in in the media mm -hmm. but in the performance back in their constituencies yes uh, at least when you see the member who topped uh, that research has gone back to even uh, his constituency mm. where he represents Kiaro and uh, they have picked some programs that he has initiated mm. that are transformative I think uh, what I can say is uh, those who did not perform so well, mm -hmm. 
maybe they need to go and learn from those who topped yeah. uh, and see how they can uh, use those uh, strategies uh, in their own way back in their respective constituencies. Mm. Remember, we are elected to serve the public. Sometimes we go in there uh, and, uh, and use that opportunity to do other things which are not related to why we got elected. So I think I want to commend those who, those who found themselves mm -hmm. at the top mm -hmm. and urge them to do more to humanity. What is the significance of this kind of research? Once it's done and the polls are out, the ranking is also out. The significance? Politics is about perception. Right. If you are top, it means that is the kind of a leader we want. Mm -hmm. If you are top, it means you are a person we need to look up to. If you are top, it means you are a transformative leader. Mm. It means uh, you can even uh, transform a country. It means you can even transform a county. Mm. If you are featuring nowhere, it means you are nowhere uh, all through. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, 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 if we are to assume this was done objectively there was no influence from anywhere mm. uh, so so in this case it has a significance it has a, a significance it is also it also means a wake up call mm. to those uh, who are not felt by those who elected them mm -hmm. so it has a lot of significance in this mm -hmm. uh, as a country if we are transforming you cannot talk of uh, transforming remember uh, far away from here, in the subcontinent of India, mm. Mahatma Gandhi once said, um, uh, "India will not be, uh, will not uh, India's development will not be determined on our urban, uh, urban uh, industrial setups, uh, India setup, mm. but how many uh, villages are transformed." Yeah. Now, in this case. These are leaders who represent various uh, constituencies across this republic, 290 of them. What does it mean for this ranking? Mm -hmm. It means some are being transformed faster, mm -hmm. better, effectively efficient, more than others. Uh, it is a wake-up call to those others who are lagging behind so mm. that they can learn, they can be woken up uh, so that they can uh, aid in transformation of the country. Yeah. Yes. I'm happy that my constituent is also somewhere, 64%. That is Mishimiwa uh, Charles Ongontwere, Kasipol. Uh, he's also... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he found himself. Yes. And by the way... 64%. <laughs> and by the way... Right. Uh, now that we are talking of ranking, mm -hmm. uh, because of the economic situations, I think... Mm. Um, the, 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 there's a national agency uh, that is flagging off mm. that uh, in many counties uh, we are seeing upsurge mm -hmm. of uh, HIV and AIDS. Yeah. And uh, I think it is also something that can call uh, to the attention of our, of our leaders mm. because we need to speak up against it. We need to act and urge the population to, 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 to do what is needed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You've talked about it and it's also here highlighted concern as nine counties record surge in new HIV cases. Um, thank you for that, DG. According to the data, uh, uh, my county, Homer Bay, <laughs> is grappling with a staggering 15.2%. Yes, actually it is all Nyanza counties. This is, uh, this is um, something not so good. Uh, Even Mombasa, the national, was in Gishu, yes, you know, the National uh, Syndemic Disease mm -hmm. Control has flagged off Homer Bay Siaya, Kisumu, Migori, Kisi, Mombasa, Samburu, Vihiga, and was in Gishu as the most affected counties in its latest report. There's no Machakos County here. Uh, you're good people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I don't think. <laughs> you are good people. According to the data, Homa Bay is uh, grappling with a staggering 15.2% increase in new cases, while Siaya is experiencing a significant 13.2%. Uh, Kisumu is facing a worrisome 14.5 percent increase in hiv infections while migori is reporting 9.7 percent increase mombasa has a 4.6 percent increase followed by kisi 4.4 percent um this is a worrying trend and according to the data the ages affected in between 24 25 and 34. 25 it's a challenge and a threat challenge. Uh, and, and, and a threat to economic development mm -hmm. in this country yeah. remember in some of those counties uh, truth be said uh, they are source of uh, academic academic uh, prowess in this country mm -hmm. 
uh, and when you hear those kind of uh, statistics um, uh, it, it is a point of worry uh, for the country yeah so I think I think I think uh, as a country we need to act and I wish um, uh, we could see mm. our national policy makers speak more about some of these issues yeah. and uh, not only talking but also acting by apportioning appropriating uh, resources to mm. ensure and dressing of such challenges yeah yes that's a very young age 25 mm. to 34 yeah. active age all right on the front stay front page of the stand newspaper big names miss out as mp nyoro tops new ranking big names miss out as mp nyoro tops uh, new ranking that's also fleshed out the front page of the daily nation infotech report mentions only top half of performing lawmakers mps have previously accused pollster of skewed poll that is also on the front page of the star newspaper we are good dp gashagwa dismisses talk of fallout with ruto we'll be talking about that later on as mp's back alonso for 2027 polls a section of Azimio members of parliament have uh, rallied behind wiper leader Kalonzo Musyoka to fly the coalition's flag in 2027 battle with President William Ruto. Eight legislators drawn from ODM Jubilee and wiper on Saturday drummed up support for the vi former vice president whom they termed as the best bet to unseat Ruto. You should be happy about this. More than happy uh okay you know uh, wait. previously <laughs> yes previously uh the coalition i belong to we have uh, we have been affected by inability to mm. make hardly decisions on some of these issues i'm very happy it is now uh, coming out one year and four one years after election four years to the next election mm -hmm. because sometimes we sit people sit taking tea, tea, sitting in conferences uh, without coming up with a candidate yes. early enough. Mm -hmm. It is good you come, al you come up with that candidate and uh, ensure he or she traverses this country to market himself or herself. It, it is a very good uh, thing and I'm very happy about what is happening. Mm. Uh, that is how democracy in this country will grow mm -hmm. because early enough we know who is the candidate on the other side. Early enough, we know who is the candidate on the other side. Mm. And uh, the country is able to interrogate policies of these two candidates, yeah. policies of these two major uh, formations. Mm. Uh, that is very important. Leave alone uh, the, the, the tribal kingpin, mm -hmm. uh, kingpinship. Mm -hmm. That is not here nor there. We need, we need to interrogate. By the way, the reason why we, this country, I believe personally, yes. mm -hmm. we have sometimes we go out to elect uh, wrong leaders is because we do not have time to interrogate what mm -hmm. they stand for. Mm -hmm. And we end up electing thieves. And then soon after election, the electorate uh, starts crying from day one mm -hmm. because of what is being implemented opposite of what they were promised uh, during the elections. Yeah. Because there, there was no time to interrogate the policies, to have these people de debate, to pass part of this, ca every corner of this country mm. to get the feeling of the people. Honorable Rilo Dinta talked about it sometimes last month. And they yes. say when they walk like a duck, talk like a duck, mm. you know, everything like a duck, then probably it's a duck. So, yes. and here we have got eight legislators <laughs> headed by mm. Sifuna himself, who's the yes. ODM, SecGen. Yes. So is it now a done deal? Uh, to us, from where we stand from, uh, it is. What I mean is, uh, already as, as, as wiper, yes. we already have a presidential candidate in the name of uh, Dr. Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. Without ratification of uh, members, uh, the NDC? Well, we, NDC is, 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 is constituted mm. by National Executive Committee member, mm -hmm. where I sit. And, and, and uh, as part of that, mm. we already have a candidate, I can tell you. I've never had anywhere anybody who has uh, who has an interest. Mm. So it is my happiest moment when I hear the bigger family mm. of Azimio uh, try to support us in what we are doing. Mm. We are not supporting somebody who, because of where we come from. No, mm. we are supporting somebody whom we think can have an alternative. Let me tell you, mm. uh, I'm yet to be challenged by anybody, by anybody uh, that. Uh, increasing um, taxes mm. uh, can lead to 
uh, transformation of a country. Mm -hmm. Never. It has never happened anywhere. You must come up with the alternatives. And that's why we are saying uh, when we already have uh, an alternative, we can uh, champion our policies, right. let them champion theirs, mm. and let the people like uh, the late uh, Matiba, Ken, Ken Matiba said, mm. let people decide, depending on those uh, policies. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, to answer your question, I'm very happy with what is happening. Mm. It shows Kenya's de uh, democracy is heading somewhere, has grown, has come of end. Yeah. Yes. Don't you think this is going to cause some crack in the Azimir? We have got different uh, principles in Azimir. Martha Kara is there. We have got the former MP Jeremiah Kioni, you know, Maina Njenga of this world, mm -hmm. Eugene Malwa, and Raila now picking Kalonzo mm -hmm. Musioka. And now eight legislators of Azimia are also are supporting Kalonzo Musioka. Some kind of fall, fallout? Or you think this is a scripted <coughs> kind of a play? Well, uh, point of correction. Mm. It is not Raila picking Kalonzo. It was Kalonzo's time his, has come. his point of reference. <laughs> yes. yes. Kalonzo's time has come. Number two, mm. uh, democracy dictates that uh, the fact that people are talking about Dr. Stephen Kalonzo Musioka does not mean if anyone has an ambition within the same coalition should not speak up. Mm. Uh, when, when you have had this, all this debate, mm -hmm. uh, nowhere has yes. any leader said, uh, Mwangangi, don't speak up of your intentions to run for presidency. No. Mm -hmm. Let them come up. It is not a question of uh, staying quiet. Come up, speak up, yeah. and uh, uh, let democracy principles. But is that debate applied. about his uh, running mate? Who? His running mate. <coughs> you first settle on the principle first. Uh -huh. Then uh, so many other factors will apply. <laughs> okay. So many other <laughs> factors will apply. <laughs> and which are those uh, okay. factors? All right. Regional balancing, yes. the issue of competence. You know, when you are picking uh, a deputy, mm -hmm. always think of competence. Mm. Somebody who can remember in our constitution, in any case, the president resigns today. Mm. Um, the deputy takes over. There is no room for, for an election. Yeah. So you first think of your country. Who are you going to elect? And is that person in your absence uh, able to run a country smoothly in a united way? Mm. Or is somebody who will start a criminal from day one by making sentiments that are going to bring uh, division in the country, that are going to make uh, our investors in this country run away, mm. that are going to make the country uncompetitive through application of uh, certain policies. Right. So, in this case, there are so many factors that will play in when, uh, when, uh, when that time comes. Mm. All yes. right. Thank you. Mm. All right. Very quickly, on to the front page of uh, the standards, finally. How not to bring down cost of living? completely different. How not to bring down cost of living? Economy experts fault the president's approach to taxation and cost of living, saying that the policies will only sink the country deeper in mire and push many to avoid paying taxes, which will ultimately make life unbearable. Something that you've talked about, DJ. And now, IBC reforms versus right of uh, representation. Again, on the front page, at least seven regions are uh, scheduled to hold by elections. However, without fully constituted electoral commission, Kenyans in these places go without a fundamental right. We have got um, different regions. You can take a look at that story. Again, how not to bring the cost of living. That is there. Speculation over losers, winners, as bipartisan talks draw to a close. Um, that is a courier wants to co uh wants coaches of talks team to whip mps into taking a non-partisan approach to resolve the issue and leaders fear that truce between root and raila will threaten their place in government um is there some kind of fear that no if a truth is there some people will might feel a bit threatened but at the end of the day the report will take center stage in any political process, mm. those fears must be there, but they are unfounded. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Right Honorable Prime Minister Raila Odinga has not once, not twice, not... Uh, he has always spoken against any peace mm. 
any piece of uh, interest in the government mm. uh, he is talking of reforms he wants to see a country that is remo uh, reformed a country that is on the path to growth yeah and uh, i think that is that should be the concern of uh, most of us uh, not nusumukate uh, business mm. yes that's that's what you in say any case you don't need in any case uh, you know when you are on the other side of uh, of the government mm. and you tend to be close to that government what it means if government succeeds uh, you are part of that success if the government you intend to deplace messes up mm. further mm -hmm. you are part of that remember in the last election um uh, the current uh, leadership kept on saying mutu na duku yake yes eh uh, mumeweka inchi kwa mandeni eh mm. uh, mmefanya hii mmefanya ile and then uh, at some point raila could say i'm not in the government but we are seeing you with the, with the same government mm. how can you tell us you are influencing the policies that are being meant we are seeing ministers coming to brief you we are seeing development being taken to where you come from mm. and you are telling us you are not part of the you know and it, it costed him look at the mansion 200000 uh, forts nationally yeah. is uh, is a, is a very uh, minute thing mm. so in this in this case uh, if anyone wants to run please uh, challenge the policies of uh, any sitting government let them uh, say we are doing this let us see your alternative mm. but the issue of being associated the fears of uh, raila being close to ruto and eventually getting piece of it mm. uh, is real but uh, it is that is not uh, how democracy i would wish to see it work in yeah. kenya okay yes. let me ask you a question dj yes yes from your own way how you're running the county government of machakos yes. how do you what is not the right way to bring down the cost of living in reference to the front page how not to bring down cost of living I taxation the regime. And how are you doing it in the county? Ah, uh, sometimes you are forced by circumstances. But what we have done, what uh, the administration of uh, Governor Wabinya Deti has mm. done is uh, not to raise so much uh, the taxes. Mm -hmm. We have tried to maintain um uh, what the former regime uh, did mm -hmm. but we have also capped down on wastage mm -hmm. uh i can tell you like myself i've not even traveled out of this country on taxpayers uh, money yes i've traveled yes. but not on taxpayers money uh i can tell you we have tried as much as we could uh, to widen the tax bracket mm. bring more Uh, to paying taxes as opposed to increasing taxation mm. uh, we have also tried to curb corruption i can tell you not even a single pending bill as a result of uh, governor vinya's inability to pay other than what we inherited mm. uh, which we are trying also to pay so uh, the, the the best way not to bring down cost of living uh, is to ensure you don't increase taxes yeah. increase the environment uh, to invest um, the, in your county and please go out market your county so that many people can come and uh, and, and and they invest uh, fight corruption mm -hmm. it's very important um the 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 the, the government the county government of machakos uh, does not relate uh, corruption mm. um, the, we want a, a, a corrupt uh, free county that is how investors will see somewhere to invest yeah. now paul collier one time uh, economist with world bank and a professor uh, once said there are some ingredients mm. on how a region on how country can grow mm -hmm. part of it is uh, fevers machakos uh, like we have an highway uh, to mombasa mm -hmm. where the manufacturers can invest in machakos and have easy access yes. to transportation means that is roads there is also a little line that goes to mombasa mm -hmm. there is also uh, we the airport which is uh, supposed to be in uh, machakos mm -hmm. but somebody somewhere seated somewhere thinks a it should yes yeah. jkia here is in machakos yes right yes 
so people who want to travel faster mm. uh, can invest in machakos and uh, have easy access to that particular facility mm. so in this case uh, the way to bring cost of living in Machakos is to ensure as many as possible have a gain, economic gainful way of uh, gaining their daily bread. Mm -hmm. And we are trying as much as we can to yeah. attain that. You know, you've answered this question as if you're the writer of this article. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in examination, they said you had oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> According to the article says that raising taxes and counting, uh, cutting spending often slows down economic recovery by reducing household spending power and consumer confidence. Number two, this can exacerbate unemployment and cause problems for those relying on social programs thus eroding public trust in the state institutions. So, but again, raising, exactly, but again yeah. at national level, Sometimes I sympathize with the new administration. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, President Ruto came in and inherited a country that was in a certain state. Mm. Kenyans know better than I do. Mm. Uh, the, when you inherit uh, maturing debts, which are maturing on a monthly basis, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the counties want their money, constituencies want their CDF, mm. you want to develop a country, uh, you want also to ensure you meet uh, these obligations of paying taxes. Mm -hmm. That balancing act, mm -hmm. sometimes I sympathize with the head of state. But uh, I think uh, the, the people is economic uh, think tank, can think widely uh, and, uh, and see the best way to raise uh, revenue yeah. other, than, other, than, other than increasing taxes. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure, I am pretty sure, so many because of uh, that increase of taxes mm. so many farms are relocating from this country and to yeah, that's neighboring not a very good to, thing to, 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 yes all right uh, it is good if you lower taxes mm -hmm. you attract more investors you tax more and uh, organize uh, those who are not paying taxes and bring them into into paying taxes no matter how little it is at the end of the day you will have more and you will have enough uh, for the country if you tax more mm. men will run away yeah. if they run away you will continue taxing more those who are remaining mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time you can also move around uh, the town mm. and you will find so many buildings are not fully occupied mm -hmm. what does that one tell you companies closing down many people uh, amongst the population losing their the the, the, the employment mm -hmm. which which is uh, which is a challenge yeah. we must look as a country uh and balancing act and that is where this national dialogue mm -hmm. committee now comes in mm -hmm. which i think uh, they have a duty to do uh, because they are in a position to at least summon anybody and uh, listen to, uh, to 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 experts on some of these issues and uh, maybe eventually do a recommendation mm. that I hope the country will implement. All right. On the first, on the page five, why Ruto's tax everything that moves approach is bound to fail. Why Ruto's tax everything that moves approach is bound to fail. The everyday Kenyan is fed up of watching YouTube and TikTok of large motorcades and frequent flyer pictures of leaders escaping a country where many struggle to get home and Kenya and Kenyans cannot afford a trial and error um, government when it comes to the worst. That is on the front page of the standard newspaper. Very quickly. Okay, let's cross over and see what's happening across our borders. Um, of course, that's something that is taking center stage here on the BBC. We have it pushes, U.S. pushes for pause in fighting as Israel, Israel says that it has cut Gaza um into two that is on the front page we all know what has been happening in the middle east with updates from uh, that when the u.s secretary of state has arrived in turkey as he continues with his diplomatic tour of the region and push for a pause in the fighting that is what is there israel says that it needs progress on the release of hostages before agreeing any pause in its offensive um the death toll continues to go up and so far, it's gone midnight in London. That is what uh, this follows Anthony Blinken's visit to the West Bank and Iraq on Sunday during a diplomatic dash 
to the region. DG, do you think that at some point there's going to be a truce between Gaza and Israel? What's happening there? Uh, that is the only way out, right. eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as uh, Israel has uh, its right mm -hmm. to defend itself, I think uh, the end game of that war, it has to come uh, uh, to an end uh, at some point. I think they will have the, 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 the most likely is a truce that will end that war. Mm. Yes. Okay. How about we take a look what's happening here? Uh, King of Jordan says that urgent medical aid airdropped into Gaza. Jordan's Air Force airdropped vital medical supplies to a field hospital in the besieged Gaza Strip. King Abdul Haitu said early Monday. This is just a few minutes ago. Actually, updated it around around five minutes ago. And this is a situation. And he's also said that most hospitals have been bombed, where a majority of people have been. Uh, sheltering an Israel strike on a refugee camp Sunday in central Gaza killed at least 45 people and injured dozens, um, according to the health ministry. The Palestinian death toll in Gaza has reached 9,770 people, including 4,008 children, according to the health ministry again. So the number continues to rise. But uh, as you said, um, uh, the Ukrainian president said that at some Russian president and Ukraine said that at some point now this has really eased and you know completely shelved the discussion between Russia and Ukraine war. Now everybody is now concentrating on Israel and Gaza right now. But we and, cannot sit back and see our neighbors' houses on fire. Did you? You, you see uh, the developing world mm. where Africa falls. Uh, I'm seeing a situation where the the poverty level is going to increase. Mm. Why? Because whenever there are these uh, armed conflict ongoing, you you will see there is no much inflow from external to the continent, and and, and uh, that in itself will increase poverty levels. Now. Uh, even international trade, we cannot uh, trade uh, smoothly mm. when uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict is ongoing. Mm -hmm. There are some areas you cannot uh, pass through, you cannot uh, ship through. Uh, when uh, Middle East the, is on fire, you expect uh, many countries to take sides. Mm. So many countries will rush uh, and assist the, 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 the side they are supporting, meaning uh, there is no time uh, to focus on these uh, poverty ravaged uh, countries. Mm. So when you hear the discussion internationally now, it is about uh, what is happening in the Middle East, uh, Israel and, uh, and uh, Palestinians. Yeah. Uh, on the other side, we know there are conflicts. Mm -hmm. Even in our neighboring uh, Sudan here, mm. there is a lot of instability. Now, um, but nobody is talking about it because the interest is elsewhere. Mm. Who is going to suffer the developing world? All right. And, uh, and, uh, and in itself, even those who are supporting these conflicts, sometimes that is the money they could have used to finance social programs mm. in countries like Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now, when there is, uh, there is conflict uh, in uh, Russia, there is conflict in, uh, in the Middle East, mm -hmm. the U.S. will uh, channel their, 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 their financial aid to those sites, uh, particularly the area they are supporting. Now who is going to suffer? Once again, yeah. uh, the is developing world. Yeah. So there is that, uh, in international relations, they call it um, a domino effect. Mm. Uh, one country uh, starts war and then uh, it has those rival e mm. effects. Or it might also um, uh, affect another country, which might also fall into war. Absolutely, it is it is a challenge. Yeah. It is a challenge, and I think the sooner it comes to an end, the better. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> I want us to listen to a clip here by the deputy president yesterday. Very quickly, director, if you, if you have. All right. Let me get your point on this, uh, DG. The mm. deputy president said that they are good, and he's not talking about the issue of being a kingpin. In mm. um, you know, Kambanya would assume that you have a kingpin. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I don't know. Do you have a kingpin in Okambani? Um, 
He has not said yes, but he is our leader. Uh, who is that? That is Dr. Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. Okay. There is no other. Fair enough. Uh, there is no other. DP Gregor de Gashago said that he doesn't have time to be the king. So we have kings and kingpins. Yeah, remember what uh, Moses Kuria tweeted just a few mm -hmm. days ago after mm -hmm. the exit of the king? <laughs> that, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, I saw that tweet by... Uh, yes. <laughs> and now we are talking about the, 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 the deputy president. And he said yesterday in Kiambu that he's not interested. He's busy with that. But mm -hmm. let me get you a quick point thought of this. Why the scramble of having being a kingpin? We, we had a king here for four days and we all know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, I will try to answer that question the best I know. One, mm. you did not apply to be born where you got born. Mm -hmm. If your mom dealt with you at that early stage, mm -hmm. uh, even as soon as she conceived you, we mm -hmm. could not be having Victor here. <laughs> um, I have no apologies to have been born from a certain uh, yes. region. Uh -huh. If the people of Yata did not elect me as a member of parliament, how will Kenya know me? Mm -hmm. If the people of Machakos did not elect Wavinya Mwangangi ticket in a gubernatorial uh, context, how will you have known me? Coming back to the question of uh, king, regional kingpins, African politics uh, are based on uh, tribes, a fact. Mm. Those tribes are organized in, uh, in a way as uh, even sometimes in those African, uh, African communities, you find clans. They have leadership. Yeah. African communities must have a leader. Uh, symbolizing uh, the leadership. So in this case, there is no way, and uh, I'm sure you can uh, look in the eye of the deputy president. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mean what he's saying. I can tell you for sure. You mean it? You think so? If, if he could have mentioned to us who is the, who is the leader of that particular bounded region, mm -hmm. he is the senior most. The reverence of a king here, yes. kingpin, uh -huh. refers to the most senior, the most preferred leader, whom in case of any major decision like right. a political decision, mm -hmm. we can look up to, to bring other leaders close, sit down and channel the political destiny of that particular region or, or community. So it's, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Uh, the only thing, those who are saying so, they are saying so simply mm -hmm. because they know they are undisputed leaders where they come from and if and if that is not true mm. i challenge uh, i challenge uh, the deputy president mm. the so the the source of that comment to tell to tell the country who the leader of uh, of uh, of mount kenya is mm. if he says today it is moses Kuria, mm -hmm. then you will see the implications of that qualified to be a kingpin who me <laughs> 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 it is never, it is not a person who decides. Yes. Uh, largely, it okay. is uh, sometimes the position you hold. Right. Um, like in this case, mm -hmm. we know, we know, we know um, the deputy president is, okay. the deputy, is the most senior uh, political leader mm -hmm. from Mount Kenya currently. Okay. So if he, he dissociates seriously uh -huh. uh, from it, uh, I will tell you uh, there will be some political consequences. Mm -hmm. Number two. Mm -hmm. Very quickly. If he is not a, if he is not a kingpin, yes. Why is he summoning leaders from Kiambu? Somebody might say he is a, he is a, he is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, but that is not that is so not enough. You think this is just politics? No, that is, that's politics. Okay, and it cannot uh, in application it cannot work. Okay, mm. DJ, thank you so much. We've done one one hour already. Thank you. We've done one already. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Francis Mongagi, Deputy Governor of Machakos County. We've talked about an array of issues, a very brilliant mind. What Machakos? Uh, you have a good son. <laughs> you have a good son. Thank you so much. Asante Sana for joining me on the show. That's where we wrap it up.